The true gambler will, of course, bet on anything, and there's no cure. Sometimes, when there's nothing to bet on, I worry, quite seriously, about going mad. In fact, another winter could do it. The long-range weathermen say the athletes among us will be skating on the Thames come January, and you know what that means, don't you? No racing. <laughs> Not necessarily. dividing line people are so fond of referring to, the one between sanity and insanity, was breached by that bloke there. An equally mad bugger known as Tom the copywriter, plus my good self, the last time we had a surfeit of snow and ice. Casper, his name is. He works or used to work until he was fired for spending too much time in the betting shop in one of the foreign embassies. Not exactly a career diplomat, but what's a career when there's racing at Doncaster? <laughs> Casper's wife left him after he told her in a moment of intoxication and great frankness that in his considered opinion when it came to who had the strongest hold on his affections his wife or the great Italian racehorse Rebo Rebo won by a furlong so <laughs> there was Casper living all alone in this enormous flat opposite Battersea Park with his two cats Keir Hardy and George Lansbury so he was something of a socialist, was Casper. And when he began to piss down with snow. Disaster. All racing cancelled. Not necessarily. <laughs> For three weeks we fidgeted here in the pub, reliving the glories of our past wins and near misses, and I desperate for a horse to lose our money on. Then... On the 22nd day of the great cold spell, Caspar walked in and said, Who fancies coming or racing tonight? Where? Australia or California? Battersea. There's been no dog racing at Battersea for a month. Not dog racing, my friend. Cat racing. <laughs> I spoke earlier of going mad. I didn't necessarily mean that I would be the first in our little group to crack. <laughs> Cat racing. Round at my place. That would be a flat race, of course. <laughs> Normally, yes, but since we're in the middle of the national hunt season, I've had to build a hurdle course. Three jumps and it's a good 40 foot from the starting post here at the kitchen end of the passage to the front door so we get a run for our money. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> Evens, Keir Hardy. Three to one the field. <laughs> Both under starter's orders, are they? Well, put it this way, Tom, I haven't fed these cats for two days. <laughs> now, I am going to place a saucer of tinned salmon here yeah. at the front door. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a good sniff of it. to the kitchen, and now they're off. <laughs> but, uh, but they're not. Well, not yet, they're not yet. Hell, Keir Hardy. I mean, it's a 7.30 meeting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. It's only 7.29. <laughs> You've got to do these things right. George Lansbury looks a goer. <laughs> I have a pound to win. Same on this bugger. And let him go, Tom, and... They're off! Jam! <laughs>
Jump you bastards! Jump! 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 Well, here in the runner-up, devour their tin salmon. Tom, Casper and I retire to the sitting room, here and after referred to as the steward's room, <laughs> to discuss the next meeting. I've got a moggy I wouldn't mind entering, Casper. A little tabby. Called Samantha. Ah. A filly. Two-year-old. <laughs> Form. <laughs> she's never been in a cat race before, but with the dog next door behind her, she's a goer. <laughs> she's entered. Samantha missed the first race, being delayed on the tube due to incident online at Earl's Court. Some poor frozen sod threw himself onto the train in a last desperate effort to get warm, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> Kerr Hardy once again romped it, and once again I went down on George Lansbury, whose form I'd been led to believe had improved. I said to Casper, this is not going to be a bundle of laughs if the favourite is going to win every race. You're right. When Samantha turns up, we'll make it a handicap race. <laughs> How do you propose to do that? With the weights from the kitchen scale. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> we agreed that if horses get three pounds for a length, then cats should get an ounce for a length. <laughs> Keir Hardy finished up carrying three ounces stuck to his back with sellotape. <laughs> and Tom turned up with Samantha, this evil-looking tabby outsider. Samantha was very much on edge, and a few years in the racing game have made me easily suspicious. I was even... More suspicious when Tom said, all nonchalant. Anyone care to lay four fibers on her? We declined. And I had a quid at threes on George Lansbury, <laughs> who I was convinced was improving with every race. <laughs> Starters' orders. And. They're off! And it's Kehardi away first, followed by Lansbury and Samantha. Samantha taking the lead over the first turtle, under the second. And it's Samantha way ahead in the rest of nowhere. As Samantha grabs the tin salmon and tries to hurl herself through the fucking door! <laughs> what a race! Samantha first, Lansbury second. Kehardi still struggling for the post. <laughs> Could I have a word with you, Tom? Who thought Casper was Lord Darby the way he carried on? He actually produced a red handkerchief from his pocket, which I correctly guessed to be cat racing's equivalent of the red flag at Newmarket or Epsom, denoting a steward's inquiry. You duped that cat, didn't you? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Come on, you gave it a dixodrin or some sort of pep pill, didn't you? You better watch what you're saying, Casper. Nobody accuses me of cat doping. <laughs> well, I'm accusing you, friend. Mm. Wait, come outside. <laughs> and that was the end of cat racing. Or was it? A few weeks later, chancing to wake up in Battersea for reasons now lost in the mists of time, I was... Walking home through the park, and who should I bump into but Casper? What you doing, Casper? Cantering Kia Hardy. <laughs> oh, yes. 
we could be in for another hot summer. A drought, in fact, in which case the going could get so hard that racing might have to be cancelled again. You never know, Jeff. <laughs> you never do. Just wait till he gets the sun on his back.